What's up guys, Jordan here with Objective-C Toro's Lesson 32, Replacing the Switch Statement. And you may be saying, uh, didn't we just add the Switch Statement to our program a few lessons back? Well, yes we did, but there are a few problems with the Switch Statement. Um, it worked and still does work very well for our rather simple program, but it doesn't allow us for easy enhancing of our program. So let's say if we wanted to have one array that holds all the transactions for all the transaction types and all the countries, because remember right now it's only holding them for Europe. Uh, using the switch statement, it would look like this conjobulated mess. Um, as you can see, that it a switch statements, they get very complicated and confusing once you start adding more and more things. Uh, they're good for just a few different cases, if you just have a few cases that you want to switch between. But when you start getting switches inside the cases, and then more cases inside of that, it just gets very, very uh, confusing. So as you can tell, switch statements had the potential of getting out of hand really quickly. Just imagine if you had a third condition. Uh, never mind. Uh, it's too painful to think about. Uh, it would be very complex and very confusing to follow. So and this complex switch is a good example of the complex control structures in general that can be so common with procedural programming. Now, OOP or object-oriented programming and Objective-C, they don't really improve this way of programming as much as they just eliminate it and completely replace it with something better. Now, real quickly, I want to talk to you guys about something. I don't have a slide for this or any bullets, but if you been watching these lessons for really any time at all, you may have noticed a bit of a pattern that I show you guys a new feature in Objective-C that allows you to add more functionality to your program and cause it to be more enhanceable in the future. I implement that new feature, whatever it may be, in code. Then just a few lessons down the road, I'm like, well, this really isn't the best way to do it. It's actually better if we do it this way. Uh, you may be saying, well, why do I do it that way? Why don't you just show us the best way to do it from the start? Well, in programming, you, you have to kind of build yourself up to uh, learning new things, and you can't just jump right into it. Uh, I couldn't just show you objects and classes the first lesson. We had to build up to that point. Also, some things that we learn about actually help us understand uh, more complex concepts down the road. And uh, the last reason is because it also just really makes you a better programmer because you now know base level C, which is applicable to other languages as well. And you may be saying, well, why are you going over this now? Well, because we're getting to, I guess you could say, the climax of learning new concepts and features of Objective-C. These concepts won't be replaced with anything else. We may tweak and modify how we implement them in our code, but we won't be replacing them with something better. And so we're about to talk about what actual professional programmers use to develop applications. And we're going to be moving into creating a full-fledged object-oriented program using only object-oriented features and not using any more control structures from procedural programming. And the first two of the three pillars of object-oriented programming uh, that we'll be talking about are inheritance and polymorphism, the third pillar being encapsulation, which we'll talk about after we finish going over inheritance and polymorphism. And these two features, they can help fix this messy switch statement. And that's why we'll be talking about them in the current and upcoming lessons, more in the upcoming lessons. So what's really coming up in the next few lessons? Well, we'll implement an inheritance-based class structure. And I know you don't really know what that means now, but you will very shortly. And this simplifies things and leaves us with a program that is easier to understand and extend in the future. And once you really start thinking in this new way, uh, programming becomes a whole lot more fun. And it will become more focused on adding new features. And you won't have to worry about, when you add a new feature, that that new feature will break or mess up something that currently runs smoothly. Now, how the program currently works. I'm not going to go over too much about how it works because I went over it in detail just a few lessons back. But currently, we have a loop that iterates through an array full of transactions. And remember that these transactions we created with uh, the, di the different loops that I showed you the last few lessons. And then the switch statement decides which method to run through based on the type of the transaction, whether it's cash or charge. 
Now, how the program will work. Well, we'll have two kinds of transaction objects, cash and credit card. Uh, remember, those are the two types of transactions, and each with a pointer to the budget it's associated with, England or Europe. And to have these two different types of transaction objects, we'll actually create two different types of transaction classes. And both transaction types will respond to a spend message and we'll add all the transactions to an array just like before and then iterate through the array and send each transaction object the spend message. So an example here is if the transaction is a class or is a cash transaction object in Europe, it has a reference to the Europe budget and the transaction then sends your budget object the spend dollars message since it is a cash transaction it sends it spend dollars. Um, another example is if the transaction is a charge transaction in England, it has a reference to the England budget and the transaction sends England budget object the charge foreign currency message since it is a charge transaction. And uh, if you're not exactly following where I'm going, if you kind of understand it but mm, you're not totally sure, uh, that's fine because like I've said many times before this will make a whole lot more sense in code once you see it in Xcode and really start working with it it will make a whole lot more sense uh, this lesson is just kind of give you a general outline of what we're going to be adding to our program what we're going to be kind of implementing but anyways the results of these changes is that we'll have one array for every transaction for every country we visit um, that's different than before because before we just had it for uh, Europe and this will reduce that whole switch statement to just this one for in loop with this one uh, statement inside of it. And as you can see, we get send every uh, transaction the spend method, and uh, it will address it will react to that spend method uh, accordingly. I'll go over that in just a second. Anyways, now if we want a new transaction, we just code it up and add it to the array. Uh, and if we want a new country, we just create the budget for that country and attach the transactions that occur in that country. And here's a little diagram of the program. As you can see, the cash transaction uh, works with the spend dollars method and the credit card transaction works with the charge foreign currency method. Now, what a transaction object will look like? Well, we'll need two instance variables. We'll need a one called budget which is uh, created from the budget class and then we'll need a double that is amount and then we'll need two methods we'll need create transaction for budget and as you can see we put the amount and the budget in there and then we need that uh, spend method now what do these new instant variables and methods do well we'll start out with the ivars uh, the first one, budget. Uh, this enables the transaction object to send a message to its budget, England, Europe, or whatever other country. And yes, I know Europe isn't a country, it's a continent, but uh, whatever. Uh, now the amount, that holds uh, the amount of the transaction, obviously. And then the first, or the two methods. First we have the initialization method, and then we have the spend method. And I'm going to go over a little bit more about the spend method. Uh, since every type of transaction has a spend method, we can enumerate through the array and send each transaction a spend method. Now, each transaction, depending on its type, cash or charge, then sends the right message to its budget. And this ability of different objects to respond differently to the same method or same message is an example of polymorphism, which we'll talk about not next lesson, but the lesson after that. And uh, both the transaction classes look the same apart from the implementation of spend. Because remember that I said we actually created two different classes for these two different types of transaction objects. So they both are exactly the same except for spend, uh, the spend method. And you can see that uh, they only differ in the fact that one is uh, spend dollars and the other is charge foreign currency. So as you can see right now, you may be able to see that this is going to be a little bit of a problem because let's say we add in another transaction, check. So we have cash, check, and credit. Three different types of transactions. If we want to add a generic fun functionality to all three of these, we have to go into each and every class and add it. And that 
doesn't make a lot of sense because the only thing that's different in all of these is just the spend method. So we'll learn about next lesson uh, about inheritance and how that can really fix this problem. So do not go into Xcode because we didn't really learn anything. Well, we didn't learn enough to actually code anything up. We learned kind of the idea of how our program will work, but we didn't actually really learn any actual code to go into Xcode and learn about. So anyways, next lesson we'll be going over inheritance and then we'll implement that uh, into the program. And then the lesson after that, we'll learn about polymorphism. So uh, some great stuff coming up. Be sure to subscribe to be notified when I upload those new videos. Also, be sure to leave any comments or questions down below. Also, check me out on Twitter and Facebook. I uh, give updates in between videos on Twitter, and I also announce on both of those when I upload a new video. And also be sure to like and favor this video. That's greatly appreciated. And uh, just thanks, guys, for checking out this video and for watching these lessons. Uh, it's much appreciated. So hopefully I'll see you in my next one real soon. Later.